cell phone to please turn it off or turn it on to silence. Once the contest has begun, the sergeant at arms will secure the doors and members of the audience are asked to refrain from leaving or entering the room during the contest. And after the contest, please do not leave the room until it is determined that all ballots have been collected. Before we begin the contest, um, I do want to welcome our dignitaries. Um, as I call your name, if you would please stand. Our district governor, Joan Moore. Again, Michelle Cabell. <laughs> Our district public relations officer, Don Williams. <laughs> Our Northwest Division Governor, John Ladd. <laughs> Our Southwest Division Governor, Helen McCullough. <laughs> Our North Division Governor, Ethel Goatee. Area governors. Oh, you know, there's there's two of them here, so I'm going to have, to have you guys stand. Um, A1 area governor, Dean Glosson. <laughs> A4 area governor, Iqbal Ach. <laughs> Any governors? Um, I didn't sign in. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Donna Weston, lieutenant governor of marketing. Governor for 31 in the Southwest area. And if only these governors ran our state. Oh, who said that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have a contest, okay? I'm going to give you the order of the contestants. And uh, the first one is not on your program, so you'll want to add that in. Contestant number one is Garrett Gray. Garrett Gray. Contestant number two, Patricia Hedinger. Patricia Hedinger. Contestant number three, Raymond Miller. Raymond Miller. Contestant number four, Robert Lee. Robert Lee. Contestant number five, Brian Vanderjack. Brian Vanderjack. Contestant number six, Ruth Princess. Ruth Princess. <coughs> We will proceed with the international speech contest. There will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Mr. Timekeeper, when I advise you, would you please signal me with the green light when one minute is up? After all the contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time they need to complete their ballots. We will now begin the international speech contest. <laughs> One, Garrett Gray, you are what you eat. You are what you eat, Garrett Gray. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and guests, I lost 52 pounds in four months. 52 pounds. That's the equivalent of me giving birth to five 10-pound babies. <laughs> but if I can do that, 
If I can lose all that weight, so can all of you in this room here today. There's nothing special about Garrett Gray. Although for the record, my beautiful wife Mandy disagrees. <laughs> today I will talk about my weight loss, my change to a healthier diet, and the unintended effect that this change had on my life. Weight loss, the battle of the bulge. It affects people of all ages, races, and sexes. Now I'm a male Caucasian in my 30s who outwardly has nothing in common with TV's Oprah Winfrey. Different age, different race, different sex, different tax bracket. <laughs> She's way up. But I completely identify with TV's Oprah Winfrey because of her continual struggle with her weight. Do not be fooled by appearances, people. Last year, at this time, I weighed in at 243 pounds. I was unhealthy, and more importantly, I was unhappy. So I began to increase my daily exercise. But the biggest key to my success was a change to a healthier diet. My weight loss journey began on April 6, 2012, when I met my trainers, Marcus Warren and Joey Thurman of Morph Personal Training in Chicago. The first thing these trainers did was evaluate my poor eating habits. Then they gave me proper diet and nutrition advice. Their first rule of thumb was do not eat something unless it had grown or it had moved sometime, <laughs> sometime in its past. The less process of food, the better it is for you. Organic meat, vegetables, fruits, and nuts fit this criteria. Potato chips, candy, fast foods did not. So I gave up the Doritos. I gave up the Big Macs. And I even gave up my Achilles heel, pizza, for healthier foods. But if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. That's a quote from Harvey McKay, best-selling author. And it applies here. So I started planning all my meals and snacks in advance so I would not stray from the path of healthy eating. Now there was an unintended effect with this healthy eating. I would, my, my body started to feel better and function better. And as my weight loss journey advanced, my trainer Marcus Warren constantly ask me, how do you feel, Garrett? And at first I was like, what? Not, how much weight have you lost, Garrett? Not, how do your clothes fit, Garrett? Not, wow, you look like an Adonis, Garrett? <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel, Garrett? Eventually, as I progressed, I began to understand what Marcus meant. Eating better foods made me feel better. <clears throat> Imagine this story. I had a coworker who took a company truck out. He made the mistake of putting diesel fuel into a truck that only took regular gasoline. Yeah. About a mile down the road, the, the truck began to shake and rattle, <laughs> cough and sputter, until it conked out on the side of the road with a black billow of smoke emanating from its engine. He caused a lot of damage to that truck, and it cost a lot of money to repair that damage. He put the wrong fuel into the truck, and surprise, surprise, it didn't function properly. Well, it's no surprise that when we put the wrong fuel into our bodies, they don't function properly either. Now, your spouse can lie to you and tell you, you look good, honey. Heck, you can even look into a mirror and lie to yourself. But your clothes will never lie to you. <laughs> that old pair of jeans in your closet that's a little too tight, it doesn't fit all together, they didn't shrink. Your waistline grew. <laughs> well, I fit my old jeans now. But I found out something much more important to me in the process. People who haven't seen me in a while, they come up to me on the street and they say, Wow, Garrett, you look good. What they cannot see is that I feel even better. 
in conclusion, my, my weight loss, my change to a healthier diet, and the effect of being feeling better because of this change, all my experiences. But they can be each and every one of your experiences too. This week, if you feel the urge to reach for that bag of potato chips, stop. <laughs> Grab an apple instead. Try it. And I guarantee you will start feeling better. The old adage is true, people. You are what you eat. Eat healthy, my friends. Madam Postmaster. You will give us one minute, and we will have one minute of silence for the uh, judges to mark their ballots. Contestant number two, Patricia Hedinger, the off switch, the off switch, Patricia Hedinger. I went out to dinner with a friend of mine some time back. I'm easy to have dinner with. Sit facing me, give me your complete attention, pick up the check. <laughs> but he was sitting, facing me all right, but I could not get his attention. He had his cell phone out. He kept texting at it and kept checking his Facebook updates, and it even rang a couple times. Finally, I could stand it no longer. I leaned over the table. Don't you ever turn that thing off? Uh, I don't think I can. I said, well, sure you can. Where's the off switch? Uh, I don't know. And he handed his phone to me. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests, there was no off switch. Well, the evening passed. I was really going to let him have it. But then I thought, am I without sin myself? I thought back to a couple Christmases ago. My family, my husband and son, we have this tradition. We go up at Christmas time to the house on the rock. If you've never been there, it's an incredible house that was built inside and on top of a rock in Spring Green, Wisconsin. And every Christmas they have thousands of Santa Clauses they decorate this place with. My father heard about this. And he said, gee, you know, I would really like to see that. I have never been there. In fact, my father never traveled all that much. But I had pages I had to respond to, emails I had to answer, phone calls I had to take. And I was just, like, too busy. I couldn't find the off switch. I thought, oh, well, we'll go in March. They open again in March. They open uh, right at the middle of the month. And they have the whole place open then. The Santa Clauses are gone, but he could see the whole thing then. And by that time, his cancer treatment will be over, and he'll be feeling a lot better, too. We'll go in March. He died in February. He never made it. Is there a house in the rock in heaven? I sure hope so, because he sure didn't get to see it while he was alive. I had to think, had I really changed? 
I was listening to um, WKNBC out of Hedinger, North Dakota. And that's how you pronounce my last name, by the way. <laughs> it was a basketball game. And I was listening to it. And I even listened to the commercials. I don't know what I would actually do with a 3,000 pound steer, but I know where to get one. <laughs> it expanded the internet. The range of KNDC from 100 miles all the way to Chicago and beyond. But what was the internet doing to my range of communications? I have something on my mind, and I realized I hadn't talked to my husband in weeks. I'd go um, do some work on the computer, go search the internet. He'd go at his office, do some work on the computer, and search the internet. I pressed the off switch for my computer. I yanked the internet, because that didn't have an off switch. <laughs> it can be done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the internet's down. Uh, yeah, uh, we need to talk. <laughs> I was right in the middle of RuneScape. Um, no. <laughs> Come on up, we'll talk. Ah, oh. came up. And I could see he was still in that game mode. He was eyeing all the possible exits from the room. <laughs> and then I saw his mind working. Well, you've been married as long as we have. You can no notice these things. Oh, please, not the relationship talk. Oh, please, not the relationship talk. Why else would she do this, though? I took a deep breath. Honey, we need to do our taxes. No! I'll do the relationship talk. I'll do the relationship talk. And we talked. We're still on speaking terms. We're, we're still married. And our taxes are done. So it does pay off to find the off switch. Now, I'm not allowed to leave the speaking area here. <laughs> if I were, though, I would be walking up and down the aisles and see who, which of you really turned off your cell phone, <laughs> and which had them on silent mode. No, you're checking email, you're checking the Facebook, you're checking sports. I don't know what sports are around now. You might have to settle for soccer. <laughs> but for you people that are in that camp, I'd like you to do something for me this week. Pick an hour of the week, get together with your loved ones, and find the off switch for all of this stuff, and go ahead and talk to each other because you never know how long you'll have someone. You never know how long you'll be here. Give someone the gift of your undivided attention. You'll be glad you did. Madam Toastman. If we can have one minute for silence for the uh, judges to mark their ballots. Contestant number three, Raymond Miller.
a matter of time, a matter of time, contestant number three, Raymond Miller. My child was born just the other day. He came to the world in the usual way. But there were planes to catch and bills to pay. He learned to walk while I was away. And he was talking before I knew it. And as he grew, he said, I'm going to be like you, Dad. You know I'm going to be like you. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, dads and moms, sons and daughters. When I first heard those words of lament by Harry Chapin, Cats in the Cradle, I was a son, a brother, and a boyfriend. The song cut deep to my soul and stirred up in childhood memories. The words of lament, lost relationship due to work. I looked up to my dad, literally and figuratively, when I was a boy. I wanted to be like him. My dad owned a small business and did blue collar work. Long hours of service calls and deliveries left little time for five kids and our stay-at-home mom. One-on-one -on -one time, scarce, but we found a way. When I was five or so, I tagged along to work. And as I grew, the more I helped. Didn't make a difference. We were having guy time. I didn't know of mortgages, car payments, grocery bills. As a kid, I lived in the now. When do we go from living in the now to being held prisoners of the past, worrying about the future. Where does the low self-esteem come? Fear of failure or success. Our youngest years are our most impressionable, and a parent's presence is precious, but can poison. Years later, I heard the song through the ears of a father. Totally different take. Parenting doesn't come with a manual. How would I do? Promise or poison? I asked myself, will my babies go to daycare to be raised by strangers? How many concerts will I miss due to work? Will I have time to play catch or attend a tea party? My son turned 10 just the other day. Thanks for the ball, Dad. Come on, let's play. Can you teach me the throw? I said, go along. My son's actually 14 now, and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Building bridges across the generation gap has been a lifelong labor of love. Football, basketball, baseball, bowling ball, golf ball, ping pong ball, beach ball, we've played with them all. Hey, Dad! Music to my soul. Have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? Hey, Dad! Who was better, Wilta Still Chamberlain or Kareem Abdul Jabbar? Hey, Dan, what does the word prejudice mean? Hey, Dad, were you ever bullied when you were a kid? Talk about your table topics. <laughs> <laughs> we 
were sowing the seeds of success, one question at a time. But I'm still waiting for the birds and bees question. <laughs> My daughter came from college for a couple days to visit her friends and take time to play. Claire, I missed you. Can we talk for a while? She nodded her head, broke out in a smile. Sure, Dad, what's up? My heart soared like an eagle. Is this how my little girl felt? When I sat down to tea, why would she cook for me her plastic play kitchen? When she was small, I'd tuck her in at night. We'd snuggle up. And I'd ask her, what was your favorite part of the day? She'd tell me, we'd talk, and then she'd ask me mine. Little did we realize that that often was our favorite part of the day. The investment you make in your family pays dividends that'll last a lifetime. Kids grow up and move away. It happens to all us parents someday. Will they call you up just to say hi, ask your advice, hear your reply? When you coming home, Dad? As I hung up that phone, it dawned on me. What will his memories be? What will your memories be? Promise or poison? There's still time. Man. One minute of silence, please, while the judges mark their ballots. <clears throat> Contestant number six. Ruth Princess, loving you to death, loving you to death, Ruth Princess. How do you celebrate your birthday? Holidays. Special occasions. Eat, drink, and be merry, right? Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. Hi, my name is Ruth and I'm an addict. It's been 10 years, 5 months, and 6 days since my last Bailey's Irish Cream. <laughs> I was celebrating my birthday back in 2002. Do you think I woke up the next day with a hangover? I woke up fat. For me, alcohol isn't the problem. It's the sugar. I'm addicted to sugar. We eat and drink when we're married. But don't you also eat and drink when you're sad? Last month, my dog died. The first thing I did was buy a plane ticket to visit mom. She loves me to death. I went down to Florida, and we had dessert every single night. <laughs> Stop the sugar, she's killing me. When my white bread Methodist mom got married, she didn't know how to cook. She'd put the tea kettle on the stove and walk away to care for her five kids. My mom? burned water. <laughs> but she learned how to cook. Chocolate chip cookies, candy.
candies and cupcakes. <laughs> my mom loved me to death. On the other side, my dad was Greek. Italians cook for their families. Greeks cook for everyone else. <laughs> In my hometown, my family owned so many restaurants, one of them was Chinese. <laughs> my dad loved me to death. Do you know what you get when you cross a chocoholic woman with a Greek man? A baby roof. <laughs> my parents loved me to death. By fifth grade, I was fat. My teacher, class, everyone line up tallest to shortest. I adjusted the tight elastic waistband of my green polyester pants. Miss Merriweather opened the big gray door. Mmm, sloppy joes. We walked down the hallway, shoes echoing like a tap dance. We arrived at the gym. <laughs> in each corner was a nurse in a white uniform and a large doctor's scale. The nurses adjusted the top weight a few pounds this way or that, and then jotted the information down on their charts. When it was my turn, I stepped on that scale. Clank! <laughs> For me, she had to move the bottom weight from 50 to 100 pounds. I was humiliated. Back then, we were told sugar is safe. Did you know sugar is more addictive than cocaine? Are you addicted? Are you loving yourself to death? Whitney studied at Princeton. I mean, Whitney the rat was studied in Princeton, France, and other laboratories. <laughs> Whitney, drink some water. Now, try cocaine water. Mm! Now, try sweet diet water, mm! and try sweet sugar water. Mm! After one day, 95% of the rat pack preferred the sweetened beverages to cocaine. Even rats already addicted to cocaine preferred <laughs> the diet there, the sweet waters. Stop the sugar! It's in our milk, our juice, our cereal. Tony the tiger is a cereal killer! <laughs> it's not mom's fault. We were told sugar is safe and fat is fatal. Well, in 2002, I learned that Dr. Atkins, he saved my life. I gave up the chocolate chip cookies, the candies, and the rice cakes. It was really easy giving up those rice cakes. <laughs> <laughs> Since then, the Atkins diet has been studied and proved that he was right. It's sugar that causes the health hazards. Heart disease, high cholesterol, high blood sugar, high blood pressure, high triglycerides, hypertension, and humiliation. It's been almost 40 years, and I still hear that clank. I was teased by total strangers, by my friends, even my dad. And in 2002, my dad said, Ruth, I'm so proud of you because I lost 54 pounds. It took me four years, but I finally found them again. 
when my dad died in 2006. I replaced the love with baklava, brownies, and Ben and Jerry's. What I remember most, though, and I have lost most of that weight again, but I, what I remember about 2006, Ruth, the basketball net's caught. Can you fix that? The next thing you know, Mom and I are playing basketball. We're living and laughing because I love my mom for life. Yes, last year, last month, we ate dessert. But we also went walking on the beach, swimming and canoeing. Because I love my mom for life. Is it time you loved yourself for life? the judges mark their ballots. Judges, when you have completed your ballots, please hold them up for the uh, vote counters to collect them. All ballots been collected. Let's give a big applause for these very <laughs> At this time, I'd like to bring up our three table topic contestants and we'll get to know a little bit about them. So if um, Wallace and Edward and Allison would please come up. Toastmaster. 
years have you achieved? I'm with Orland Park 4871, and I earned my CC last summer and CL about a year before that. Looking at your uh, profile, you witnessed something that is, uh, was world news and a lot of ways world shattering. Could you tell us about it? 1986, I was a junior in college, and I was listening to the radio. I was going to college about 20 miles south of the Space Center. They had routinely had the news on in the cafeteria, and they were announcing the countdown for the Challenger. I said, I'm a junior. How many more space launches are they going to have before I graduate next year? And then I gave it second thought. You never know. Let's go to the window and watch it. So even from 20 miles south, I could look out, and I could see once, from even from the second floor of the cafeteria, had to wait for the shuttle to get above the tree line, and I had done that before. Given this was the winter, it was kind of chilly outside, but there were schools from other parts of the country that were doing their spring training for their sports on our campus. Well, I see the plume go up. Everything looks normal. And all of a sudden, they got that mushroom cloud-like effect, that puff. And I knew something was wrong. And of course, there was a time delay listening to the news. And eventually, they had the essence of NASA saying, we have an anomaly, understatement <laughs> of the day. I knew something was wrong, but it would take time to sort it out. I went and ate my breakfast. And I obviously, that part of the state would, would hear the story as it developed that day, much like we remember 911. But there was kids from I don't, MIT or Harvard, I think it was MIT's crew team, and they came in, wow, we saw the space shuttle launch. Uh, you're missing something here. So that was a very memorable day, seeing the Challenger explode with my naked eye. And that, that was the first of other things that I've seen. But that was the first memory such as that. And thank you for this opportunity to share this with you. Thank you. So, Alison, you meant, um, first of all, what club are you in and what level have you attained? Peace Toastmasters, I joined, I think, February of so this good, year. So, good job thank coming you. and competing already. Um, you mentioned you're a teacher. What grade do you teach and what do you teach? Third and fourth uh, combined classroom. Uh, I'm in an ability-based school, so it's private school, but we don't put them if you're in seven, you're in second grade, if you're in eight, you're in third. If you can read or do math at a certain level, we'll take you, regardless of your age, and put you in the class where you have that ability. Do the kids know you're competing? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you win, you can tell them. I will. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs> Are you with and what level have you attained? Oak Brook Speakers, and I need one more speech to get my CC. Oh, excellent. Do you have that done? I have it done. Okay, I have good. it done. Good, wonderful. Yes, ma'am. Now, you mentioned your interests are writing and golf. Which one do you want to just tell us a little bit about? I like writing. Okay. And, and the reason for that is I, um, most of my, from 1976 until 1990, I worked at uh, City College of Chicago in adult education, and all of the students I was in the GED department and ESL was second language. All of the people that came to us had dropped out of school. A lot of them dropped out at um, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. A lot of them didn't get to high school. And so one of the things that we had to do was to um, reconstruct them because they had basically lost all self-esteem. And so what you have to do is you have to pick people up, and you have to kind of brush them off, set them on their feet, and then send them forth. And so one of the things that I did was I taught English composition. And a lot of them couldn't read, but they couldn't write either. And so what I did was I developed a technique, a method, to teach them how to write. And what I did, I took eight parts of speech, then I took all your, your terms, different parts of sentences, and what I did was I had them to write a sentence, and I had them to circle all of the verbs, adjectives, nouns, and pronouns, so on and so forth. Then I had them identify all of the terms, and then all of the phrases, and then all of the sentences. 
You're getting me scared. You're taking me back to school. <laughs> so I, I, I learned, and, and, and I learned that people, when they take the time to write, they think. And when they think, they're planting the seeds of self-development. So that's why I love to write. Wonderful. Thank you. And if I can now have our international speech contestants come up here. First, give you all the uh, your certificates, sure. and then we will get to know a little bit about each one of you, which club you're with. Okay. And isn't it exciting? One of them might be off to Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, Garrett, uh, what club are you with, and uh, what level have you reached? I'm with Orland Park Toastmasters Club 4871. And I joined last October, so I've been a, just a member for six months, and on Monday I will give my 10th speech for my... Uh, for my Now, you say you are a bench artist. I don't know what that means. Well, um, I live in Tinley Park, and uh, do, does anybody here remember the... Uh, Cows that the city of Chicago sure. did. Yeah. yeah. Well, Tilly Park for this is the tenth year, so it's a decade-long uh, uh, beautification project that runs from May 1st to October 1st, and they get uh, a call to artists, and they pick 20 to put out 20 decorative benches. But these benches become something more than a bench. Uh, cool. They take. I'm a pool of of the artists, and uh, we build up these benches that uh, into uh, these fantastic designs. Uh, add wood to it, and uh, we have to make it weatherproof. I work with my father-in-law. All the artists are um, selected from a pool of artists that submit. And my father-in-law, this is our third year. Uh, the theme this year is fairy tales, not necessarily something two grown men really can respond to, but I have 21 nie uh, nieces and nephews, so, uh, and 18 of them are nieces. So I got some help there, um, and the last two years, we also want one best group project. So we're hoping to three-peat like the Bulls. Um, so we can. Good, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> what club are you with and what level have you attained? Uh, Peace Toastmasters is a new club. You know that one, you know? I've uh, gotten my co competent communicator and working on my advanced communicator program. Wonderful. Tell us about the first place you got in the state fair. Oh, yeah. That, that I want in my obituary. Oh! Because <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I got first place for raspberry jam. And these were my father's raspberries, too. About the last crop we ever got out of them, actually. Oh, wonderful. Well, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Could have slipped those to the judges next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey, Ray, how are you? I'm wonderful. And what club are you with, and what level have you attained? Well, I'm uh, representing the uh, Downers Grove Club. I also belong to West Suburban. Okay, wonderful. And, and uh, I would, I give, this was my sixth speech. Oh, sixth speech. Oh, good for you. You're already competing. <coughs> wonderful. You have published four e-books and 17 instructional DVDs. What subject or subjects are they on? Well, I ran a massage school for 23 years and a massage therapist. So the books are, uh, the e-books are in self-help for like eyes, jaw, TMJ problems. Uh, the things you can do to improve your own health. And the, the DVDs uh, are on massage therapy for you, your spouse, your kids, and um, also other techniques you can do to relieve pain. That people can do for themselves. I've taught professionals for a long time. Now it's like how can regular folk take care of a loved one, the parents, whatever. Great. And Toastmasters is going to be great for you then in letting people know about this. Uh, and if that's so what it's about, yeah. Club and your um, achievement. Or? I'm here representing West Suburban Speakers in LaGrange Park. Their club has been around so long, we only have three digigits, 930. Wow. wow. I'm also in two other clubs, Windy City. Woo! And this. 
<laughs> you have written two, uh, a book and a novel. Tell us about the novel, Love and Crazy. Love and Crazy is about a woman's fairy tale life turned into a nightmare. And I know all about fairy tales because I do children's parties, princess and pirate parties, so uh, we'll have to get him. <laughs> but it, uh, it occurred when I was bedridden for six months and sleeping 18 hours a day, my mind was just dreaming up storms. And so I, I wrote this book as a cautionary tale to uh, toxins in our environment and in our body. Wonderful. Well, let's give everyone here a come up here. And you guys have been fab fabulous. It's been a great Saturday morning. Go ahead and take your seats and let's see what's next. So now I, I believe I. It, um, it is time to turn this meeting over. Is Helen here? Oh. I'm coming. Okay, great. But she's not Helen. No, no. she's not. Did I turn something else? Maybe I'm not coming up. I need surgery too. I'm not going back there. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, I'm here. My first announcement has to be, pay your dues if you haven't paid them. I think we still have like 111 clubs that haven't paid our dues. And they're due by April 1st. So you can pay them online, please. And next announcements are... We have some membership programs to help you get members to get enough people to pay your dues. I don't know if you saw the flyers out there. You can take whatever ones you'd like. I'd like to start out first with the program that was started by Toastmasters International. <coughs> membership one plus one. How many people are familiar with it? A few. Well, you can actually earn this awesome t-shirt. How you do that is if you're supposed to actually find someone that you know will join, <laughs> send their name in, you'll get a decal, a one plus one decal. You'll also get a letter from the president of Toastmasters International, and also Dan Rex, the CEO, who I learned who he was when I went to training. That's another story. <laughs> and I also have a few giveaways, so there are some out there notepads and these chip clips. How you get the t-shirt is your name will then go in for a drawing. And they, I don't know exactly how many t-shirts they're giving out. Also, uh, the top 20 clubs will get $250 of Toastmaster gift certificates. And then um, five of the districts, the 87 districts, will get $500. Now, I also heard when I was talking to Allison out on the break that the gentleman with her is going to join, I think, on Monday, he said. Did you say that? Or sometime next week? Soon. Soon! <laughs> <laughs> Before I start. <prefer. laughs> I guess so. You guys each have one of these. <laughs> that, please. A couple other programs. Uh, there's an open house challenge. And actually, when I gave this announcement at the last speech contest I was, and we had it going only until March 31st, we've now extended it to April 15th. Now, there's two ways you can win. The first one is if you hold an open house, there's a form to submit just saying, you know, how you put the open house together, invited people, and all that. Your clubs will go in for a drive. Does anybody know what the prize is? A video camera! Wow. Yay! You can video save your number. Now, the second way to win is if you have four new members join and you've paid your dues before April 1st, then you can either win a new club banner, if you don't have one, or a banner stand. Most of us have to hang it someplace because we don't have a banner stand. Or if you already have both of those, a set of advanced manuals. So for people that are finishing their CCs, you can have manuals to help them go on their, their merry way and earn uh, more 
it works. Another one, retention, that's a problem. Do you have people in your club that all of a sudden are not showing up and everybody's too busy to call to see where they are? Well, we have this program called the Buddy Up Program. So if you call them, get them to come back, you know, help them out, earning some awards or signing up for some meeting roles, there's a form to fill out and you will get a buddy pin. And I have 300 of them. <laughs> so please, start being a buddy. It goes until right before uh, the, con the uh, conference, April 19th and 20th. Let's see, what else do we have? I'm sure there's some other ones out there. Club oh. Ambassador, here's my form. Club Ambassador, <laughs> yes. How many people know about the Club Ambassador? Oh my goodness, I'm getting, I'm getting them through the mail, through the fax, through the emails. Thank goodness I have someone keeping a log. We're already up in, uh, do you want me to share this? Up to? What are you up to? 84, 85? Eight Something six. like that. Visits. Wow. He sends me almost daily for <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so Once again, there's form to fill out. And you, as I said, you've got three different ways you can send it to me. It's really awesome. Almost everybody that I've talked to that have gone to clubs, I think it's great. You get to meet people. You know, each club is slightly different. You get some new ideas to maybe go back and use at your club. So you only need three visits, and it goes till the end of the year, till June 30th. But if you get this done before the conference, you can walk down the red carpet and receive your pin and a certificate. Okay. And all this stuff is also on the D30 website. Any questions? You said we can pay the membership online. Yes. Is that D30 or is it Toastmasters? Toastmasters.org. Okay, right. Hurry up. All right. Turn it back to you. Yeah. You want me to have this? Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you.
qualifications for time in the International Speech Contest. Our second place contestant, Patricia Hettinger.